Hi, I'm Aaron Newworth with ETF Trends and ETF Database. I'm joined by Mark Carlson, Senior Investment Strategist at FlexShares Exchange Traded Funds. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Doing well, Aaron. Thank you. Great. Well, let's get this going. With the reopening of the U.S. economy, investors have been attracted to investments in natural resources and commodities. Can you talk about some of the natural resource sectors attracting the most attention and the reasons behind investor interests? Sure, Aaron. So because of the drop in demand during 2020, the price movements for most all natural resources and commodities has been generally positive since the third quarter of last year. The interesting thing is that many of the factors driving this price appreciation can vary depending on the natural resource sector. And just as a couple examples, if we look at, say, oil, market technicals uh, drove the price of oil negative in April of 2020, but oil prices have rebounded and reaching $40 a barrel in the third quarter of 2020 and now trading the low $60 per barrel. Price of oil is being driven by both returning demand from the reopening of many economies, along with supply constraint through production discipline by OPEC members and U.S. producers. And if we look at things like copper, copper prices have surged as supply declines resulted from mines uh, reducing production due to the pandemic, combined with increased production of EVs, which is driving demand, because an EV vehicle requires 10 times the amount of copper as a conventional vehicle. This significant global commitment to carbon reduction that is coming for, or driving the demand for EVs is expected to continue and really power the demand for copper longer term. Then if we look at another segment that's uh, really hot right now is the timber and lumber market. Like copper, uh, timber sawmills were operating at reduced capacity or completely shuttered due to COVID. Just as monetary and fiscal stimulus drove demand for lumber uh, via housing starts and remodeling projects. Now supply will likely catch up when housing starts to slow due to seasonality, but so far the price performance has been near record breaking and long-term housing demand should continue to support it, just not in the, the red hot market that we have today. So investors are naturally trying to take advantage of these trends within their investment portfolios. There's an, an opportunity for positive returns on price movements. But more importantly, investors are also considering ways to hedge against the inflation that more often than not accompanies higher natural resource price movements. Current inflation expectations are trending towards some of the highest levels we've had since the great financial crisis. So investing in natural resources is a solid strategy to offset these inflationary pressures. You, you mentioned inflation hedging is one of the key investment objectives investors seek to address by investing in natural resources, given the price movements that have occurred. Is it too late for investors to invest in natural resources? And what are FlexShare's thoughts on the opportunities in, nat in natural resources? Well, at Fletcher's, we believe investors should have a dedicated allocation to natural resource equities within their portfolio. These equities address several investment objectives, the key one being inflation hedging, as exposure to companies in the upstream portion of the supply chain will see their revenues, earnings, cash flows, and therefore their stock valuations correlated to the price movements in their natural resources. Fletcher's also advocates for broader exposure across multiple upstream natural resource sectors, where investors need not time the market in order to benefit from, say, a sudden supply shock or a, a robust uptick in demand. The transition occurring to the low carbon economy is a perfect example. As I talked about earlier in terms of driving copper consumption, other metals such as nickel, cobalt, lithium, manganese, and aluminum will all need to see an increase in supplies, else their prices will respond accordingly to the rise in demand uh, via the construction of EV vehicles. Because of technological uh, innovations could alter both demand and supply fundamentals for many of these resources used, being used in the transition to a, carbon, a less carbon environment, a dedicated, well-balanced, investment portfolio across natural resources is typically one of the best ways for investors to go. Not having to time that market, being able to have diversification along with the investment benefits 
of the inflation hedging that come with the exposure to natural resources. Okay, well, your FlexShares Morningstar Global Upstream Natural Resources Index ETF, ticker GUNR, is designed to gain exposure to natural resources through company equities. Could you explain the reasoning behind the strategy and offer suggestions on how investors can incorporate exposure to natural resource equities into their portfolios? Yeah, sure, Aaron. So when we studied how to best gain exposure to natural resources, we really wanted a vehicle that would be the most effective for a strategic allocation to address intermediate inflation hedging. And when I say intermediate, I mean like five to 15 years of inflationary pressures, as well as offering investors an opportunity to, to realize capital appreciation from increased demand for natural resources. We looked at commodity futures, and while we observed that futures are good at hedging inflation, they are truly trading vehicles, not investing vehicles, as they are not an ideal long-term total return investment solution as the row yield component of futures returns is often negative. And our research found that by focusing on natural resource companies that are situated in the upstream portion of the supply chain, having direct ownership or lease rights to the natural resources they um, operate in, investors can gain good inflation hedging and historically better total return performance versus futures. Part of this total return uh, performance also comes in the form of current income as these companies often pay dividends. In this uh, really unprecedented low, in, uh, low yield environment, uh, this last attribute or investment characteristic can be quite useful for advisors in addressing the income needs of their clients while still gaining the benefit of hedging against inflation. Now, after focusing on natural resource equities, we worked with index provider Morningstar to construct a rules-based index in order for our ETF gunner to track in order to gain exposure to five key natural resource sectors, those being energy, metals, agriculture, timber, and water resources. We tested the best allocation among these five sectors for inflation hedging and the data indicated that a balanced exposure with 30% to energy, metals, and agriculture sectors combined with 5% each in timber and water reached our investment objective of hedging against inflation uh, through the exposure of 120 global companies, 30 each in the bigger three, uh, 15 each in timber and water, the smaller sectors. And we also was very important in terms of targeting global exposure because we wanted to hedge against uh, a weaker US dollar. A declining US dollar or the debasement of the US dollar is actually, result, actually results in the importation of inflation. In portfolio uh, allocation applications, flex shares and Northern Trust Asset Management includes natural resource exposure in the alternative asset classes bucket along with global listed infrastructure, real estate, and for accredited investors, hedge funds, and private equity. Now, depending on a client's investment objectives and risk tolerances, an allocation to an ETF such as Gunner is typically ranged between two to 4% of the portfolio on a strategic basis with added or lowered exposure based on our investment policy committee's tactical allocation outlook, which is a six to 12 month uh, recommendation based on near-term investment expectations. This allocation is typically funded from a portfolio's equity allocation, typically 40% from U.S. dollar exposed equity and 60% from the international equity exposure to offset some of the correlate, correlation risk to other equity sectors since we are gaining access to natural resources through publicly listed equity securities. Now, as the world recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic, economic activity driven by population trends, innovation, and improved standards of living, we feel will continue to drive demand for energy, food, and housing, among other areas. Investors would stand to benefit by ensuring the purchasing power of their portfolio assets through an exposure to a broad basket of companies operating in the natural resource sectors we highlighted above. Energy, metals, agriculture, timber, and water all serve 
as the building blocks of global economies and a major source of inflationary pressures over time. Aaron, thank you for your time. Well, very good. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate your insights. I look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you.